Welcome back to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Yuli named the auto me. Sorry, English. Oh, English. <laughs> you know which uh, car to Christian Jen? Yes. 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 Then you can drive in line 10 via. Number 10. 10. Okay. Yes. Thank, okay. You. Thank, okay. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice trip. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is episode two of our trip to Norway. In the last episode, we took you from the Channel Tunnel in Folkestone over to Calais. From there, we drove straight to Bruges for an evening walk around the town. The following day was a tough day of driving all the way from Bruges to Emshaven where we are going to take the ferry all the way to Christiansand in Norway. In this episode, we're going to show you around the ship and our first day in Norway. We're the first passenger vehicle onto the ferry and we were taken all the way through the car deck to the exit doors at the other end. Tony Brown's just gone off to get some coffee. We just got on board and it's very, very quiet at the moment. Hardly anyone here. We're waiting for our cabin to be ready, so we thought we'd come and relax in the cafe with a cup of coffee. How much were these? These are Americanos and they're four euros fifty each. Mm. They've just announced that we can now go to our cabins. Um, I'll have the right hand side. We've got reading lights by the bed. Window's a bit grabby. Here's Charlie Brown rifling my wallet. So you've got the shower, toilet, and the mirror. And we've got our coats, jumpers, and warm hats. Warm hats in the pockets of the coat. Yeah. And then in a short while, we'll walk the emergency route. History has shown that people who do this have a far higher chance of survival in the event of an accident. It only takes a couple of minutes to do and will make all the difference. Well, there's plenty of people here, all with the same idea. The weather is calm and warm, so we found a cosy spot and just stayed here until we set sail. Time for a tour around the ship, I think. This is reception where we tried to book a table. More on that later. This is an advert for what they're selling in the shops, really. Now, if you've been watching us for a while, you'll know my belly rules my head. So a top priority for me is to work out where we're going to eat tonight. This is one of the small cafes on board. I like the way they show you samples of the food so you can see what you're gonna get. This is the Grand Buffet and this is the most popular place on the ship and it was absolutely heaving very soon after leaving port we fancied eating here the grill house but sadly that was not to be we just tried to book a table in the restaurant for tonight and the earliest time they had a table was eight o'clock so we don't want to eat that late do we so we'll go to the buffet tonight see what that's like so how much are they 8490 euros. 84. Right. They got a really good shot, but booze really features heavily, and there'd be no chance getting one of these crates in the camper. You like picking them up, you but know, you never like buy them. Look, these are nice. Yeah, you married me as the evidence. If you fancy a bit of cheese, there's lots here. I was really impressed with the shopping on board. They seem to have anything you could want. Karen likes picking things up and saying not bad for whatever price it might be. Up on deck nine, you can go outside. They've got a bar up there, although it wasn't open. Well, it's certainly windy. It's not cold though, is it? No. Lovely in the sun. If you go around the other side of the ship, it's quite cold there. By the time we reached the buffet, things had begun to quieten down. Earlier on, the queues were halfway down the ship. 
So how much was it? So it's thirty-nine euros fifty per person. All right. Okay. It's including everything. Yeah. And there's uh, wine and beer on tap as well. Brilliant. I think the uh, chunky fish is mackerel and it was absolutely delicious. We thought the food was really good and worth the money seeing we're on a ferry. I think it's like an apple crumble, uh, some sort of strawberry mousse and a chocolate eclair. Carol loves her puddings but they're not for me. It's quite a noisy place to eat. But by the time we got in there, there were plenty of spare tables to be had. But beware, it's pretty cosy if you don't like sitting next to other people. Oh, and by the way, I lied about having a dessert. I had the bread and butter pudding. During the evening, you can relax in one of the bars. Or catch a show in the theatre. We've got a big day tomorrow, so just before sunset, we went back up on deck to see the sun go down. Tomorrow morning, we'll be arriving in Christiansen. We opted for an early night and slept peacefully in our cabin whilst the ferry made its way to Norway. I like their little squeegee for the floor. Yeah, I mean, really good. We had a peaceful night on the boat. We've been absolutely lucky with this crossing because it's like a mill pond out there. It's just before 7 a.m. and we've decided to use one of the cafes for our breakfast. So how much did it all this cost? So we've got, um, you've got what's in there, ham, baguettes, yeah. a croissant, a banana, a coffee and a latte, 19 euros 50. Just to let you know, we have some special offers for you this morning. First off, we have a 10% discount on all perfumes in the shop. And for those of you who would like a summer speed blueberry cider, we have a 20% discount in the supermarkets. All the winos are running downstairs. I think Carol was born to travel. This was a spare of the moment trip to the Norway. I'd seen talk in the press that there might be future lockdowns due to Covid and I thought to myself I'm not going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to get out there now and get this trip done just in case we're not allowed to in the future. Pretty soon we were all called back to the car deck and it's always good to see that the van was as you left it. Oh, nice weather. Beautiful. Couldn't be better, could it? No. Are there any checks or not? I suppose there should be. Well, Norway's not in the EU. Isn't it in the but Schengen? It's in the Schengen, so I suppose. Isn't Schengen a travel area? Yeah. Sorry about all this noise you can hear. That's caused by the Velcro straps on our seat belts. We were trying an experiment to see if we could get the sound better, but I think it's backfired a little. Left. Left. Well, that was very simple. Nobody stopped us at all. Let's clear my way. give ourselves a little time to acclimatise, we plan to visit a museum very close to the port. And it's just surrounded in here. Okay, let's go park in the shade, shall we? First thing we've got to sort out is the parking restrictions, and that's where Google Lens comes in handy. It's quite an unassuming building, isn't it? But during the Second World War, you certainly wouldn't want to have ended up here. And that's because this place was the SS headquarters during the occupation. Audio guides are available. 
which helps you to understand the recollections of the experiences of the local population during that time. The various displays are not in English and we needed to use Google Translate to be able to read them. These are just some of the tools that the SS used to terrorise the local population. They have one of the German Enigma coding machines here and probably one of the best libraries I've ever seen on books about the Second World War, some of which are in English. And there's a very comfortable place for you to sit and look at them. Interesting place to visit. And now we're going to find somewhere to chillax. It's quite rude. Yeah, don't speak too soon. The traffic in Christian Sam was nowhere near as busy as I thought it would be. Up the top of the hill here is somewhere we spotted on Google Maps. Now, what's this lorry doing? We're going to have to get used to these steep hills quickly. This is Adoya, a little island just off Christian Sand. And we'd always planned to come up here and park and sort ourselves out and have a little break. We just had a nightmare trying to set up the parking payment using various apps and because it wouldn't accept our credit card for some reason. And you see MOT have gift. That means with payments. And then we've got a sign over there which gives the details of the various parking apps and where the nearest parking meter is. We weren't expecting to be out walking without jumpers on. Very close to where we'd parked are these old bunkers from the Second World War. From here, a coastal path takes you all around the island. The first descent is so steep, you can barely grip with your shoes. Oh, Blimey, yeah. it's steep, isn't it? Yeah, I hope it's not slippy. There's huge boulders everywhere you look here. And Daisy May is in her element. At the bottom, you can get a view of Oda Royal Lighthouse. Danger of rockfall, travel on at your own risk. Look how steep those rock cliffs are up there. We're still a bit knackered from all the driving, so we headed back up to the van. Well, that was a killer coming back up that hill. So when you finished your parking, you have to stop it on the app, otherwise it keeps rolling. So I've just done that and to park here for just over an hour cost us 23 knock, which is what? Just over two pounds. Just over two pounds. Right, we've had a rest and now we're going to head back into Christian Sand. We had no trouble parking the van on the street, but again, you have to use an app to pay for parking. Can't believe this weather, and the kids are absolutely loving running through that water. This is Christian San Domkirk, the cathedral. I was struck by how quiet this church is. Some of the ones we've been in, people are nattering. In here, the only noise is people shuffling along the wooden floors. managed to lose my Apple headphones that I use for filming, the ones I adapted to prevent wind noise. Catastrophe. So we're on the hunt for a new set. Then we're gonna to have to find some fur so I can adapt them again. Okay, 
20 quid later and I've got a new pair. Lucky it's old technology. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're cheap old technology. Yeah. It's kind right of a look door. hobby shop. What's the chance Could this of be that? the world? On the hump for some fake fur now. Ooh. It's felt. Oh, they're feathers. Aren't they good? Okay, search is over. I've bought this little kid's toy with two furry ears and hopefully that will do the trick. Now we've got to get back before the old parking runs out. Yeah. Do to extend it and get an ice cream or something? If you want to. We spotted this van selling frozen yoghurt. The perfect bench, half in shade, half in sun. Put this card away. To eat our frozen yoghurt. Well, all the different flavours come in pods. Right. Like and a little coffee pod. Like the Nespresso coffee machine. Yeah. And then you put the pod in, close the lid, and then press the button, and it comes out in a swirl into this container. It's like a container under and it comes out. It's really nice stuff, isn't it? Very good. Good quality. And it was only. Well, less than four pound each, but that's not bad for Norwegian prices. <laughs> it's extortionate money, but never mind. Traffic lights, as far as the eye can see, and a hold up to match. What was I saying about there being no traffic? Right, we enjoyed ourselves walking around Christian Sand, but now we're going to start heading out into the countryside. So, how much is diesel today then? 23.79. Slightly more than the UK. Yeah. Well, driving here has been a piece of cake so far. So this looks like a free car park we've just spotted by the side of the road. As we were driving along, we noticed the pea on Pocket Earth. This will do us, run it, for a while. And the sign just said no waiting over 24 hours. So it'll do us for a while. It'll do us for the night, hopefully. Nice and shady as well. Oh, so it's not too noisy. So this is my new wind muff for my brand new Apple headphones. So all we need now is somewhere windy to give it a test, see if it works. We've got some leftover broccoli an onion, uh, pasta sauce with some penne regate. We've got a pack of our barbecue mix of sausages whistling away. Our first evening meal in Norway. It's been a good day. To be going on with yummy well we do hope you enjoyed watching our arrival in norway if you want to see more then make sure you're subscribed and you turn on notifications join us next time as we move further away from christian stand out into the open country 